G'day guys and welcome back to the Boundary Riders YouTube channel. Today we're here with another trades, rumors, and news video. Um, I'm wearing my high vis because I came from work. I swear to God, this is my uniform for this podcast. Now, <laughs> the last few weeks I've worn it. But nonetheless, we've got our co host of the channel. Can't say podcast anymore because he's never there for it. Thank you. Jack. Um, yeah. How did you think? You've seen a few trade rumors over the past few days. You've sent me a few. We'll be talking yeah. about them today. Um, one of them you sent me this morning, which we'll talk about first, is uh, Brody Grundy potentially looking at Sydney. Well, Sydney having interest yeah. in Brody Grundy. You were, you're obviously a Port fan. Um, mm. Would you want Brody Grundy at Port Adelaide next yeah, year? 100%. Yeah, 100. percent And I'm a Sydney fan, so yeah. if we got him, would you be yeah. shitty? Yeah, I would be shitty. <laughs> because also he's from SA, so it would be pretty shitty that he would go, but. I think that, um, I, I, like I mentioned to you this morning, um, I'll say off air so we sound official, yeah. official but um, off air, I said that, <laughs> fuck that's fucking stupid, um, that I think he may go to Sydney because there's a lot less media scrutiny there. Because, mm. I mean, that's a big reason why Buddy Franklin went to Sydney as well. Obviously, big money recruits, even going back as far as Tony Lockett, yeah. is the reason why he went there. So I think that Sydney are an opposite are a chance I don't really, I mean it's really hard to say because no one's really giving much away as to um, where he wants to go they're saying that he wants to leave Melbourne if he doesn't get his spot back if you had to pick right now if you had to have a guess where do you think he'll be in the 2024 I think he's going to be in South Australia I think he's going to be at Port Adelaide I do see hoping but I do actually think he's going to be at Port Adelaide but also do you think that it's a bit weird that Sydney are going to go straight for Brady Grundy half of the Buddy Franklin deal like it just seems like they're going to chuck the whole bank at um, Grundy to get him I think it's a better idea for Sydney to do that than picking a forward because I think that Sydney I think I think at the time when we picked up Buddy Franklin we didn't really need him yeah. I mean, I know it sounds a bit strange, but we at the time we did have Kirk Tippett, we did have Sam Reid, we did have a lot of forwards coming through, mm. and I'm not saying that Buddy that Kirk Tippett's up there with any of those cunts. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'm yeah. saying we did have forwards. We don't have a ruckman at the moment, so I oh, think you got Peter Adams. Well, all right, we don't have a ruckman at the moment, <laughs> so I think it would be a good choice for Sydney to maybe go for him. And I think it would because now and Tom Barras has obviously indicated that he wants to stay at West Coast. I think that. Um, Sydney, I think that he would have been the most expensive defender to get anyway. Yeah, yeah. So I think now Sydney, if they want to pick a defender as well, they've got a little bit more salary cap space to do so. Mm. But um, speaking of Sydney, we'll keep going down that track. And there is talk about um, Dylan Stevens, a uh, young wingman for the Sydney Swans, potentially wanting to move on. And North Melbourne is a big suitor for him as he is out of contract. This was actually a couple of years ago. It was between him and Jordan Dawson who would stay at the Swans. And um, Jordan Dawson decided to leave to Adelaide because of the money. And then Dylan Stevens decided to stay because I think they offered him, I think, a, a little bit extra money on his contract. Mm. So um, when I first heard this, I wasn't really surprised because he hasn't been in the, in the 22 for Sydney much this year. Um, he's been a lot more in the VFL because he lost a bit of form. But last year, he played the last like 10 or 11 games, played the grand final for the Swans, played some pretty influential roles on the wing for Sydney throughout the final series last year. I think it'd be a bit of a loss for Sydney if they did lose him because he is quite a good runner. But I do understand if, especially a club like North Melbourne, they're probably going to pay overs like they've done in the past with recruits. I like think they've averaged he... every recruit they've ever got in yeah. the last five. Years. I mean, this this really stinks, Jared Pollock. Yeah, it does. Jared Pollock good... trade. I, this really depends on how much North Melbourne are offering him mm. here. If North Melbourne are offering him the bank, he goes. And yeah. God bless him. Off you go, man. You fucking earn that bank, and you know. Don't play finals ever again. But um, but yeah, I think that Dylan Stevens, uh, this could happen. I think it's about 50-50 at this stage. Do you think it would happen or do you think that he... I don't think it's even close to 50-50. I think it's close to a, a 20-80, really. Like, what, did he well, go, what 20 did he go? No, 20, he, 20 he'll stays. stay. He will 100, he'll oh. 80% stay. Okay. Because why would he want to go to such a dreadful club like North Melbourne at the moment? He's from SA. Like, if... Yeah, besides the money, the money though. <laughs> like, he doesn't seem like that sort of bloke anyway, but... Um, but, I mean, he is only 20 yeah, years odd. So, I mean, look, if the money comes at him, I think he will go. I've been thinking about this since he came out today. Like, he's from SA. C um, the Crows just lost... Um, Paul Seedsman. Well, Paul Seedsman, but also they lost the chance, the race for uh, Mason Redmond. I, I, think, think, if you, I yeah. think if you chase uh, Dylan Stevens, he's a beautiful kick. And he can play off the half-back line if they wanted to, and, and off the wing. So yeah. I think like a Bergman, uh, 
and uh, I mean, some I think, other players. I, I think, think there's, I think there's a good chance that he should. He, the Crows should look at him. He's an SA boy. He's out of contract. He could look to come back. Yeah. A big thing as well is um, I think that's what they may have would have may have thought of playing as Jordan Dawson earlier on, but then they yeah. realised that he was a better midfielder, so they protected him in there. So I think yeah. Dylan Stevens could definitely fill that role, and also. Brody Smith is coming out of a coming to the end as well, so I think that wouldn't be a bad idea. But sticking on Sydney for one more, uh, Lewis Melican has also been talked about as an option for North Melbourne as um, right. Ben Mackay, that's his name. Um, he's potentially moving on as well. Uh, we'll have to talk about that. Actually, we'll talk about that next one. But um, Lewis Melican to North Melbourne, I think it's a possibility because he doesn't really get a lot of opportunities in mm. Sydney. He's kind of down the pecking order. However, I think that he definitely um, actually has a spot at the Swans. As, but it depends on if Sydney go for a big defender in the trade period, because yeah. if he does, if they don't, then he's going to be falling behind again. Well, so I think there's there's a lot that there's not a lot of defenders on the on the table. The now the brass is gone. It's yeah. Zerk Thatcher, Radicalia, and Dude. But again, Dude's out for basically most yeah. of twenty twenty four. So, so it's basically yeah. them so too. he he'll stay at the Crows on a one. A, I don't even know. If it's, I think he's contracted for next year. The Crows. He's contracted till next year, but yeah. not the year after. So after. he'll be contracted. There's no point of any pla- a team looking at him. Yeah, you might as well. There's only like two, oh, and Ben three. McKay as well. Yeah, so there's about four players, maybe five defenders that are on the table at the moment. So he's got the spot in um, in Sydney. Yeah, if he wanted to move, I think there'd be other clubs that could definitely go for him as well. I think this is the thing about North Melbourne as well. Obviously, they're way down the ladder. They haven't improved this year. Mm. They're not a destination club. I think it's going to be very difficult to get people there. After that, we get to Ben Mackay, and he has definitely been a lot more linked in the past month or so to North, uh, to um, Essendon. Mm. I think this will happen pretty quick. Yeah. I think this will be a pretty quick one. I think he is going to go to Essendon now. I think Port Adelaide have kind of called on him. I think they've kind of decided to go between either both or Brendan Zerk Thatcher and Radicalia. So I think Ben Mackay has definitely got an option to go to um, Essendon. I think you want to stay in Melbourne as well because his brother's there. Yeah. So I think that's pretty much just... I think it's probably one of the big ones that's basically a certainty at this point. We've always said... A, I'm, I'm going to go out there and say this is 100% going to happen at the yeah. end of the year. After that, we get to just a little one here, Mitch Georgiades. He is being offered a contract from Port Adelaide, but he is still looking at his options. He hasn't penned a paper yet. Um... A bit interesting, because, I mean, Western Australia, he's from Western Australia. Fremantle, I think, would be a big suitor for him. West Coast as well, but I don't know if he'd want to go to West Coast. It'd be interesting, because they have got a lot of money, though, at West Coast, and, but they, and they want to rebuild. But the question is, after being at a club like Port Adelaide, who have been there about since he started, would he want to go all the way back to the beginning? As a Port person, do you believe? would you be happy to let Mitch Georgiades go? No. Not with all this... Um Past two or three years with Dixon, he Dixon looks nearly nearly done. He might well uh, he'll get. I don't. Know, I think he's contracted till the end of twenty twenty five. If I'm not being wrong, that might be right. But he's not going to go. He's not going to get another contract from Port Adelaide. I yeah. wouldn't offer him one. He's just too injury prone at the moment, and you just can't get back on the on the on the field. And you need someone like you only got really Ollie Lord, who is that big bustling um, forward. And he's just not up to it yet. So Georgiades does give a point of difference as well. Yeah. He's not much of that bustling forward, but he does take a packed mark. Yeah, he can take a contested mark, and that's what Port Adelaide need. So that, they'd be really sh- struggling if they get rid of him, I think. After that, we get to a different player. This was, this, this was one that surprised me looking at it, is um, Taron Thomas. Now, this isn't so much that he's looking to leave, but more a lot of clubs are looking at him. Now, I, this surprised me a lot because of how he's... Well, how his career has gone um, mm. off uh, field sure. sort of dramas. Um, yeah, I really don't know why any clubs will be looking at him, especially now. I think maybe wait a few years, see if he's um, he the keeps up. With, stuff. Yeah, if he keeps up with the good behaviours. But mm. this is a very weird one. Yeah. I mean, I know, I know obviously people would probably look at like a Tyson Stengel and see that he had a very couple of poor years off field, but then he went to Geelong and won a premiership and got an All Australian. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. This seems like a very long shot for a lot of clubs and I think maybe it's the potential would just wait and see on this one because I think I mean he's got talent all over it's a huge risk for a club to take maybe a big club with a good culture could maybe take the risk mm. but a club uh, you know it's thereabouts I don't know I just don't know if it's I'd be idea. very afraid as well because he is from Tasmania I've got a gr- good feeling that when Tasmania may get into the to- um, competition 
Thomas is going to be one of the high picks that they're going to look at straight away to bring him home. Next one is Sam Flanders. He has definitely emerged in the past month or so, basically since Stephen King took over. He's mm-hmm. gone midfield and he's finding a lot of good form in there. And now St Kilda, who have been looking for a couple of midfielders um, through these r- rumor videos, we've been talking about uh, James Jordan for one. Uh, we've got another player in a couple of minutes that we'll talk about. But Sam Flanders has been uh, rumored to uh, potential suitor for St Kilda. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he. St- I don't know if he goes though. Um, the one thing is the Gold Coast have got. Th- I was listening to uh, something today that the Gold Coast have got three players inside the first round that are in their academy that yeah. will be going in round one. And it looks like they're going to need another couple more draft picks. So Sam Flanders could be potentially pushed out just to get yeah. a couple more draft picks. I, I'm, I'm 50-50 on Flanders leaving, though. I think it's going to come down to the fact is, like you said, it's going to come down to the academy players that if they think they're going to be all in the top 15, they're going to need some draft picks and they're going to need to get quick ones. So yeah. he might be, like you said, fall out of a favour because of that reason. Yeah. And staying on St Kilda, another player who's potentially um, moving to them is uh, Paddy Dow. Now, Paddy Dow um, has been getting a good spot in the Carlton midfield over the past month or two, but there has been a lot of injuries through there. Chera, Walsh um, have been the main ones who have been in and out, and Kennedy as well, who have been in and out of the team with injury. And um, so they don't really... I don't think he would feel like his spot's very safe. And St Kilda, have, they've got the inside track on this deal. Yeah. I think that he goes at the end of the year. I think it's to be... Yeah. I, I'm surprised he didn't go last year, but I think this year he's going to go. Well, he said last year that he wanted to fight for his spot, but I think he... he I, think he's he an, I think he's done all he can, yeah. And um, I think he needs another environment to see if he actually is an AFL player. Because what we've seen in the VFL that he's shown, that he's, he's very good, but... He just needs a good run at the AFL level. So I think if he goes to St Kilda, they're going to give him a good shot at it. So it'll be good for him, I think. Now, one that I saw, and I'm going to I'm going to say this straight out. This is not... Ha- I don't think this will happen. But it's Dustin Martin. They're talking how the fact that Damien Hardwick's basically locked in the job at the Gold Coast, that, that Dustin Martin may well be wanting to move on up to the Gold Coast. Look, we've heard this story before that Dustin Martin wants to leave Richmond. We've heard this story for, what, five years now? Yeah. I don't think he's leaving. No, he's not. I, 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 the one thing is, though, now that Crotchin and um, Rewan has retired, a lot of his mates would be moving on as well. So maybe he would want to stay with Damien Hardwick, but I just think it's not... I just don't think it will happen. I think he, he's going to stay off um, one club player. Yeah. He just seems that sort of... Pl- um, person really why would he want to leave now yeah, I mean it's, it's like, like you could have left a couple of years ago when this well when rumours about the swans were coming along yeah but I don't think Dustin Martin's leaving at the end of the year I think it's and then just a couple more to go through uh, one is um, Finlay McRae he is still in contract with Collingwood um, obviously brother of Jackson McRae but uh, he's basically been in the VFL for most of his career at Collingwood and um, they're saying that he will stay um, at Collingwood however if someone is coming along and offering the right deal he would potentially move on I think that's probably a pretty fair thing to say it's pretty hard to get inside the Collingwood lineup at the moment mm. he does pretty okay in the VFL I think that a club like um, like a North Melbourne or something could probably get a job get a yeah. um, a deal done with a, with a fringe player like that and finally uh, we've got Trent B- Bianco obviously another Collingwood midfielder uh, a couple of years ago, he was probably what he was in the lineup for Collingwood, yeah, probably sitting around that twenty six. Probably he was definitely the, mm-hmm. just on the cusp of getting on the lineup. But he's, I think, he's only played a couple of games this year, and um, he's also out of contract. So if he doesn't get picked up, he gets delisted. Obviously, uh, I don't know if there's a lot of talk about um, him moving to somewhere, but I think maybe there's there could be a club for him. Yeah, I um, think there's off the wing. Club. Yeah, but I mean, again, there's a dime a dozen for a wingman. It'd be yeah. interesting if he... I don't know if there'd be many going after him. Maybe. We'll see how that one works out. But basically, guys, that is all the trade rumours we have for you. But yeah, guys, uh, make sure to check out our other trade rumours videos. I think we'll put a little playlist so you guys can watch through it. Because we don't really cover the same player twice unless it's like a different club. So, yeah, if you want to check that out, I'll make a playlist so you guys... Um, thanks for watching. The uh, podcast will be out on Tuesday once again. Hopefully your club wins this weekend. That's all from us, so we'll catch you all next time. See you later, guys.